Hills Radio Adventure Theater. I'm Tom Bosley. Welcome to the magic world of radio, the world of your imagination, a world only half a step away from reality. Together, we will journey to other continents, other places. We'll travel back into yesterday and ahead into tomorrow. And since time is without boundaries, so is the universe. It goes on forever. Billions of stars are suns to billions of planets. Some very much like our own Earth. And on these planets, perhaps, just perhaps, there will be people very much like ourselves. Our story today is titled Survival Test and was especially written for the General Mills Radio Adventure Theater by Victoria Dan. It stars Jack Grimes and Russell Horton. I'll be back shortly with Act One. This is... <laughs> One hundred and fifty years ago, no one would have believed that one day we would send a man to the moon. Science keeps advancing at such an incredible speed. Now just imagine how much the world is going to change in another hundred and fifty years. A trip to Mars will be as common as a trip to Paris. And man will be exploring beyond his own solar system. Hopefully, however, one thing that won't change too much will be man himself. Major? Yes, Cadet McNeil? The assignments for the final exam. Complaining again? Well, it's the final assignments, Major. I I'm sure there must be some mistake. Mistake? That's impossible. Let me see the roster again. Yes, sir. Here we are. Cadet Tyler McNeil and Cadet Franklin Mullinson assigned to Planet 87, right? Well, yes, but, but, but Something Major... Something wrong with Planet 87, McNeil? It, 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 it's not that, sir. Cadet McNeil... For your graduating class, we've spared no expense in our search for new testing areas. Planet 87 is our most recent acquisition. It's not where you assign me, sir, but with whom. I can't go on a survival test with Cadet Franklin Mullinson. McNeil, here at the Space Academy, we believe in the principles of democracy, and one of those principles is fairness. What's the one basic way to ensure fairness? Alphabetical order, sir. On target. But Cadet Mullinson doesn't have the stamina for a 10-day survival test. And the rules say that if one partner fails, we both fail. I don't think you're giving your buddy Mullinson a chance. Now get your gear together. The transport ship leaves launch station Zeta at 0800. But Major... McNeil, you're dismissed. <laughs> Approaching planet 87. Prepare to descend. Check seat positions. Kind of looks like Earth down there, doesn't it, McNeil? Hi. Look at all that vegetation. It's one big jungle. <laughs> Let me tell you, I could write a book about surviving in the jungle. Mollinson, I'm not interested in the books you could write. Now, look, McNeil, we're going to be stuck on an uninhabited, practically unexplored planet alone for the next ten days. Now, shouldn't we make some effort to get along? I don't see why. And for one thing, I might be able to teach you a few things. Y you're all talk. I'm ranked in the top five percent of our class, and you, I think, are a bit further down the line. So you test well on paper. This is a different kind of test, one that requires imagination, strength. In exactly... Two seconds, we will reach the surface of planet 87. Landing site is designated point of embarkation A. Stand by. McNeil, Mollinson. Yes, sir. Yes, Major. I want to wish you both good luck and remind you of your objective. You have exactly ten solar days to travel from point A to pick up point B. You must rendezvous with this ship at point B... By sundown of the tenth day. Is that understood? Yes, sir. I want further detail. Included in your equipment is a small radio, adjusted to transmit an emergency distress code. Planet 87 has been carefully inspected by unmanned probes. 
And it's not particularly hazardous. Life consists completely of plants. The climate is temperate. However, the terrain is still unfamiliar. And there's always the possibility that one of you might be accidentally injured. Or you might decide to terminate the test for one reason or another. In any case, if you use the signal, the test is automatically over. Your attention, we have now arrived on the surface of Planet 87, Hatch Field Lifted. Hi, once again. Good luck, gentlemen. See you in ten days, sir. that we are the first human beings to ever set foot on this planet? Now, uh, pick up point B is three degrees north-northwest. According to this map, we're approximately... A most unusual landscape. Hmm? A little bit of everything, if that's possible. <laughs> now, where we are right here, it's sandy and flat, a perfect landing site. And then just ahead, it becomes rocky and hilly, leading directly into what appears to be a tropical rainforest. <laughs> just doesn't seem real. Yeah, well, it's real, all right. Now, we're uh, here. Uh Exactly how far away is point B? Well, according to this map, it's 148 kilometers. Well, let's see. That would make it about 15 kilometers a day. It's a cinch. Sounds too easy. That's because you always expect the worst. Mullinson, I don't want to spend the next ten days arguing. Let's get out of the sand trap and watch your step over there. It's kind of soft, and uh, you wouldn't want to trip with all that equipment on your back. I am perfectly capable of taking care of my... Uh, Tyler! Huh? Uh, stand still. Don't move. What is it? Don't move. Stand still. That's quicksand. Are you crazy? I am telling you there's quicksand right in front of you. How, 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 how do I get out of now, here? Now just stay calm. Stay calm. I'm surrounded by quicksand, and you tell me to stay calm. You, you're supposed to be the genius. Get me out of here. Well, it's amazing the way quicksand can appear suddenly out of nowhere. Yeah, Franklin! Yeah, oh, okay, Tyler. Now, here's what you do. Try moving back the way you came. Right. The ground is firm where your footprints are, and, and so is that mound you're standing on. Now, now, you think you can make a 180 degree turnaround? Yeah, yeah, okay. Good. Good. Now... Uh, Move back in your footprint. Right, easy. Just slowly. I am. Slowly. I am. Careful. Yeah. Good. Good. Yep. Hey, air. <laughs> oh. You did it. Oh, that that uh, that was close. You you uh, just saved my life. Uh, forget it. I guess I haven't been giving you enough credit, Mullinson. Been making excellent time for three days now. Well, I could do with some lunch. What was that? What was that? I thought I heard something. Uh, footsteps, maybe. Well, it's just getting a bit more windy. Well, it is getting windier, but did you feel that? Feel what? That tingling, like a like a hundred little ants crawling on my skin. Yeah, my clothes feel kind of funny. Full of static. It... My... My hair, my, my hair is standing on air. Franklin, look out! Oh, oh, that that tree almost got me. Are you okay? Yeah. Oh, oh this planet is crazy. First it was quicksand, and now some kind of atmospheric disturbance, or electrically charged particles bombarding us from all directions. No, oh, we gotta find shelter fast. <laughs> Maybe we can get some cover over there by those rocks. Yeah. Yeah. By those particles like sand in my eyes. Yeah, I feel it, too. Get, get down flat. <laughs> my eyes. Tyler, I, I can't see. Get down. Crawl on your stomach. I can't see where I'm going. You're doing fine. Move straight ahead. <laughs> Under that huge boulder, there's a crevice. D- d- don't stop. I, it's no use, Tyler. I can't see. You stay flat. Grab a hold of my feet and let me drag you. Come on, just a little bit further. boy. Keep your head down. Okay, okay. Uh, this is probably the safest spot around. What kind of storm is this? Well, it doesn't seem possible, but it's an iron storm. Iron storm? Yeah. 
The atmosphere on this planet is too thick, like on Earth. All those different layers in the air act like a barrier against things like this. None of the rules seem to apply on this place. That, that's what makes it all so unreal. Listen. It's stopping. How are your eyes? They're still blurry, but at least they don't sting anymore. Well, we've got a few more hours of light. Let, let's get moving again. Uh, Tyler? Yeah? Thanks. What for? Pulling me to safety. I, uh, I panicked back there. <laughs> so now we're even. I am really bushed. Uh, we ought to bed down for the night. I guess so. Yeah. Well, right, here's a good spot. These <sighs> rock formations are hollow. Uh, take a look. Uh, what is it, Tyler? There it is again. You're still hearing strange noises? There's something out there. I, I, I can't put my finger on it. Oh, there isn't anything we checked. Any strange place will make you imagine all sorts of things. Uh, come on, let's let's get settled here. Yeah. This rock is carved out just like a cave. Uh, come on in and take a look. Tyler, are you coming? Call it a feeling, but it's as if as if something is watching us. Ah! Franklin, Franklin, are you all right? Franklin, answer me. Where are you? The unexpected, it is said, always happens. The way things have been going so far, this turn of events might be a surprise even to Tyler McNeil. But you, our listeners, have by now become accustomed to expecting the unexpected from us. We will expect a great deal more from you when I return shortly with Act Two. General Mills Radio Adventure Theater will return shortly. His name is Tyler McNeil, and he lives 150 years in the future. He's a space cadet on a 10-day survival test. Right now, he's standing at the mouth of a cave on a strange and distant planet. He heard someone scream. Was it his buddy, Cadet Mullinson? The survival test has become a nightmare. Franklin! Please answer me! Nobody just disappears like that. He's... He's got to be somewhere. Franklin! Hey, buddy! Say something! You will not move. Who are you? You will not move until I tell you that you may move. There are people on this planet. I I knew we were being watched. You are being observed. The enemy is always observed. Well, I suppose I should be frightened meeting a, a an alien, but somehow I'm not. You're just a girl. Now, I, now, what have you done with my friend? The thin, frail one. Have you hurt him? He saw me and attempted to escape. Unfortunately, he slipped and fell down a chasm. Franklin dead. This is all some terrible nightmare. I'll wake up Your and he'll... friend sustained a broken leg. He's not dead then? No. Oh, thank heaven. Well, what have you done with him? He is being cared for. Where is he? You will come with me. All right, all right. Just don't poke me with that spear. Where are we going? Walk beside this stream uh, into the cave. Uh, Ages ago, this stream cut the passageways out of the rock. It is a holy place. Look, are you taking me to see my friend? Disrespect will not be tolerated. In there. Franklin, how's your leg? Oh. Hurts like the devil. I wish there was something I could do for you. It's all my fault. I kept saying there wasn't anything out there, that you were hearing things. Never mind about that now. We'll we'll get out of here. How? You've uh, got the laser gun? 
Uh, well, you insisted on carrying it. You said in all fairness we should take turns. It was your turn. You do have the laser, don't you? You see, I... You don't. No, I don't. You lost it. No, I, I know where it is. Uh... You dropped it when you fell. No. Franklin, just tell me. I... I gave it to Sheila. Sheila? The girl who brought you in here. Uh, she's the leader. Oh, well, that's just great. Actually, it's a rather interesting society, completely matriarchal. The women run everything. They even fight the wars. The men stay home. How are we going to get out of here without the laser? Well, what we ran into was a war party. There's a total of about 20 women out there. 20, that's 20 spears. We, we couldn't get through that with, without the laser. Hey, Tyler, I'm really sorry about this. Yeah, we're in a pretty bad spot. Now, this situation is totally unexpected and definitely hazardous. We do have an alternative. I think you know what it is. Mm, the emergency radio. <sighs> I used to think that passing this exam meant everything. Well, it doesn't, not now. The most important thing is to stay alive. No. No radio. So we fail this test. There'll be other tests. We cannot send the distress signal, not even if we wanted to. Of course we can. Remember, I'm carrying the radio. It won't work. I understand how you feel, but we have to send out that emergency Tyler, signal. Tyler, it won't work. I... I fixed it back on the ship. You what? You... Deliberately sabotaged our radio? Oh, please, listen for a minute. You, you must understand. Understand? What's to understand? You, you give the queen of the Amazons here your laser gun. You destroy our only means of communication. What am I supposed to understand? Oh, it's easy for you, Tyler. You're tall and strong and confident. It's, it's easy for you to be brave. What gives you that idea? My grandfather led the Neptune probe. My uncle is military governor of Alpha Theta Four. My brother Frederick is the youngest squadron commander in the galaxy. Do you know what the pressure on me is like? I can't fail. I have... I have too much to live up to. I'm not allowed to fail. So you destroyed the radio. I didn't want to be tempted to signal the major. I... I couldn't afford to be tempted. <sighs> Oh, 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 all right, forget it. There's nothing we can do about it now. Well, what do you think they'll do with us? Well, I'm not going to sit around here waiting to find out. Hey, hold it. But where are you going? To have a little talk with your friend, Sheila. <laughs> come here without being sent for. I had to talk with you. Yaita, Ondrina. You have to call for help? Are you so afraid of one man alone? You are insolent. And you are afraid of me. That is ridiculous. Then call off your aides. What is it you wish to speak of? When do you intend to let us go? <laughs> you are prisoners of war. We're not from here, from this planet. How can we be prisoners of war? You are from the hill tribe. No. The mountains, then? Uh, never heard of them. Do you take us for fools? Would you have us believe you fell from the sky? Funny as it may seem, that's about what happened. Enough. What are you going to do with us? You will suffer the fate of all who trespass into the valley. You're going to kill us. We are not savages. You are strong. You will make yourself useful laboring in the fields. If the frail one heals, he will join you. That's slavery. That is our way. For the last time, my friend and I come from a very far away place. We mean no harm. Then what is this? Uh, be, be careful with that thing. Oh, so it is a weapon. You lie when you say you mean no harm. It's for protection. Be careful how you handle that laser gun. How do you use it? Oh, the end is not very sharp. Stop, you're activating it. What does this, this laser do? Let it go. Drop it or I'll break your arm. I, I will kill you for this. No, you won't. You, you burned my spear. I can burn a hole right through you, too. <sighs> so you'd better start listening to me. First... I want you to get your Amazons to make up some kind of stretcher. No. As long as they believe I can kill you, they'll do anything I tell them to do. You're wrong. Yagita, Andrina, Solindi. Stay right where you are or I'll use this laser on you. 
Now, you just saw this laser burn a hole through solid rock. Obey me, or Chila gets the same. Do not listen to him. I am your leader. What are you all standing like statues for? They won't move. Not as long as they think I'll use this on you. But I am their leader. They have never disobeyed me. Okay, you three over there. Get to work on building something to carry Franklin. This is a shameful day. I am disgraced. Come with me. Tyler, I can't believe it. You actually did it. All right, you've got the map. How far is it to point B? Uh, 30 kilometers. Well, that's just a day or so away. We'd better get started. I... I can't come with you. Of course you can. Oh, my leg. It would just slow you down. I can't leave you. Unless we both show up at pickup point B, we'll both flunk out. All right, bring it on in. What on earth are... An improvised stretcher? Yeah, all right. Now, now, lift him up. Gently, gently. That, 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 that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm going to be carried the rest of the way? Well, what else would you suggest? All right, now move him carefully. I'll be right behind you with Sheila here and this laser. All right, it isn't much further now. What do you say, Franklin? We're right on schedule. Yeah, the uh, rendezvous ship should be right over there by those hills ahead yeah. of us. What are they stopping for? You're leading us right into the forest. So? It rains in the forest. Well, you're not afraid of getting wet, are you? You do not understand. The rains are deadly, deadly. We will not go. Listen, Sheila, I have no intention of hurting you or your girls. Now, now they've got to get him over those mountains. I'm sorry, Sheila. I, I, I must keep you hostage for a little while longer. They will not go all the way with us through the forest. They are frightened of the rains. The, the sun is shining. I don't see a single cloud. It will happen suddenly, out of nowhere, when we enter the forest. Franklin, if we made you some sort of crutch out of one of those branches, could you manage to walk? I, I, I could try. I am frightened for all of us if we enter the forest. Now, Sheila, I'm sorry, but this really is a test of survival. Survival? Yeah. Okay, uh, Franklin, how's that? You think you can manage? Uh, oh, yeah, that'll, that'll do fine. Uh, let's go, then. Uh, oh, we're almost there. I can't believe it. Uh, how much further did you say? Well, straight through here, into that clearing. Uh, can't wait to see the look on the Major's face. The wind. The wind. It carries the smell of ashes. Cinders. Death. Now, just just a little further, Tyler. Just, just through these trees. I wonder what that smell is. Tyler. What's the matter? Look. Oh, what's wrong? Ahead. In the clearing. It can't be. The rendezvous ship. How could it have crashed? How? There's hardly anything left of it. What are we going to do now? I don't know. We're... We're stranded here, aren't we? I don't know. I don't know. So far, we've given you two cadets, a strange survival test, and a most inopportune crash of a rescue ship. Interesting ingredients for another completely different kind of test. And we'll see how well prepared our young friends are when I return shortly with Act Three. The General Mills Radio Adventure Theater will return shortly. We all should have said Abracadabra. When something goes wrong, you can usually count on it to go very wrong. Tyler and Franklin are stranded, not on a desert island, but on a remote planet in the far reaches of the galaxy. How much worse could things be? I still can't believe it. The rendezvous ship burned. Shouldn't we, uh, check for survivors? Oh, nobody could survive that, Franklin. Nobody. I just thought maybe, uh... 
the Major, he was on that ship. Don't think about it. This thing, this ship that has burned, it was a means of transportation? Yes. What did it do? Well, not... Well, you, you wouldn't understand. Perhaps I do understand. You have lost your arrogance. You seem somehow defeated. Uh, considering how things seem to be going... Perhaps things are not quite the way they seem. What's she talking about? I see that while only three of us stand here, there are five sets of footprints on the ground. She's right. Look! Why didn't I notice them? The shape of the foot. And how deep the imprint. Made from soft skin boots. Oh, this cannot be. But you told us no one ever comes here. This is the story they tell us. They tell it to keep us away. Fools we were not to have known it. They want it for themselves. Who? Who tells you? The Hill Tribe. The Hill Tribe? Oh, what was that? Something is moving behind those bushes. Hey, we'd better hit the ground. How friendly is the Hill Tribe? If they have seen us, we are dead. Franklin, let's go take a look. Sheila, you'd better stay here. But I... Please, Sheila. I will wait. Here. Something's up ahead. Okay. Keep out of sight. Looks like just two of them. I don't believe it. They're dressed like Earthmen. They must be one of us. What would Earthmen be doing here? We're here. Maybe they're stranded, too. Well, they look friendly enough. Well, come on, let's uh, let's meet them. Yeah. Hey, hey there! Well, what the devil? Hello there. Hey, Beck, take a look. We got company. Uh, what are you, uh, space traders? Aren't you boys slightly on the young side? Uh, no offense to be so far out in the galaxy. We're cadets on a survival mission. We're surprised to see you. The, this planet is uncharted for the public. Who are these kids? They're cadets. Space cadets. Gentlemen, this is my colleague, Mr. Bex. I am Captain Jasper Yates. Uh, retired. Hey, isn't that one of those uh, new lasers? The newest? Oh, that's a beautiful weapon. Uh, we're in a bad fix now. Our rendezvous ship crashed back there. Yeah, I saw it. Absolute shame. That must have been a splendid craft. Not at all like the heap of junk Bex and I have. Well, then, we're just space traders trying to make a marginal living. Uh, where is your ship, Mr. Yates? Oh, how stupid of me. You'll want to use our radio. We'd appreciate it. Of course. Uh, by the way, I just have to tell you, that laser is the most incredible thing... It, would it be all right if I took a look at that? It's just fantastic. Sure. Where is your ship? It makes. Uh-huh. How much do you think one of these things would cost? Take a look. Hey. <laughs> Real nice. Franklin. Look at his jacket. What about it? That's the insignia from the SS Darcy. The Darcy? That's impossible. It disappeared over two years ago. All hands lost. Something's wrong. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Yates, uh, can I have that laser back for a minute, please? No. What? I said no. Vex, if any of these two makes a move towards that gun, burn a hole through them. You aren't space traders. We aren't. What do you know about the SS Darcy? Never heard of it. He spotted my jacket. Don't move another centimeter. That's what you are, space scavengers. Scavengers? They monitor distress signals and close in on helpless spaceships. They board them and take whatever they can carry. Yeah, the law of salvage is as old as the sea back on Earth. Sure, if the vessel is deserted. But you don't even wait for the crew to leave, do you? I bet there were still men alive on the SS Darcy when you boarded her. Hey, J.M., you want me to burn them? You'd use our own laser on us? It's not your laser anymore. I don't know, Bex. It would be easier if we got them out of the way. On the other hand, it might be good for some money. Give me that gun and you tie them up while I consider the options. Okay. 
planning on ransom? You, you, you crazy? Boys, we're just trying to make a living. Do you think we like to... Uh, Rebecca, I've got his arm. Rebecca, help me. I've got his weapon. Get the other one. Right. Keep the point to the ground. Rex, help. Don't let go of his arm. Help yourself. i got to handle two wild women. i got this one, Franklin. Help Sheila. Oh, I dropped the laser. Let go of it. Let go. Yeah. He's out cold. Mm. So's the other one, Sheila. How did you get here? I should have guessed you would walk into a trap. I waited for a chance to surprise him. How did he come to have your weapon? It's a long story. Thank you for saving us. These men are not of the Hill tribe. Uh, we better tie them up while they're still unconscious. Do you hear that? What is it? The Hill tribe speak. We have been seen. Where can we go? Well, according to our map, beyond these trees, there's a sharp drop. I'd say about a hundred feet. All pretty rocky below. You mean we're trapped? If they'd planned it themselves, we couldn't have been more vulnerable. Listen, the drums have stopped. What does that mean? It means they are ready now. It's quiet. Almost too quiet. What in the universe... It has begun. They're hurling spears. Look at the size of that spear. Uh, you see how deep the spearheads are buried in the tree trunk? What powerful arms they must have. Tyler, it's, it's coming from all directions. We're trapped. Well, keep your head down. Down! Oh, how are we going to get out of this one? Fire! Fire the thing! The weapon at them! How can you fight an enemy you can't see? Where am I supposed to point my laser? Anywhere! It will frighten them. If I can only draw them out into the open. Aim your weapon at any tree. Why don't you listen to her, Tyler? What's the point? Do you have any better ideas? All right. Good. Again. Well, I don't see what good... Just this... do it. Oh. They see the trees fall and they scare them. Okay, that's all. I don't intend to drain our energy reserves in a blind hunch. It has stopped. Yeah, she's right. The attack has stopped. Well, even if it was a good idea, they're, they're still out there. We, we can't move until they do. I'm getting tired of this waiting. Soon it'll be dark and we'll really be in trouble. I hate to bring this up, but we, uh, we do have another alternative. We, we could surrender. What? It's inevitable. The Hill Tribe does not take prisoners. That takes care of that. It has started again. Oh, we're going to be here forever. Those Hill people have bad aim. Strange. You must not stand up. You will be killed. How? The spears will... Let's talk about those spears for a minute. Where are they? Look how far above our heads they are. They're halfway up the height of the trees. What are you saying? Isn't it obvious? They can't be trying to kill us now, can they? You mean, maybe they're just putting a scare into us? As a matter of fact, I'd like to see what's behind that brush right now. Hey, are you crazy? You stay here. Tyler, you can't... Look, there's something strange going on here, and I intend to find out what it is. But, but, Tyler... What have we got to lose? He's been gone too long. He's been but a moment. It's still too long. I'm going to go after him. You mustn't. Wait a little longer. Franklin! Franklin! Tyler! Franklin, come here! You've got to see this! <laughs> oh, you had me worried, Tyler. I... Just take a look at this. What is it? Well, it's obviously some kind of mechanical device. A giant version of one of those ancient crossbows, except it's fully automatic. You mean... This thing... This thing has been firing at us for the past four hours. But what about the Hill Tribe? This is the Hill Tribe. But I saw... What did you see? You only thought you saw something running through the brush. You were seeing what someone else placed in your mind, suggested to you. That's it. That's what Sheila told me. Franklin, Sheila talked to us. Well, of course, how else do people communicate? Ah, but how could she talk to us in our own language? How would she know English? 
this planet is light years away from Earth. It's unexplored, uninhabited, according to the probe. Yet it was inhabited. Hmm. I never thought about it before. A survival test. A test of wits on a planet that has a little of everything. Quicksand, electrical storms, natives, space scavengers. Like someone sat down and... And what? Planned it. Well, who would plan something like this? Who? The Major. The Major? That's ridiculous. He's dead. Is he? Well, we saw the ship. It crashed and burned. All we saw was the remains of what looked like the ship. We never saw or heard anything crash. So many things about this test bothered me. But it didn't all come together until now. Did you notice that in every dangerous situation we were in, all we had to do was just use our heads? And somehow, we found a way out. You certainly did, gentlemen. Uh, you certainly did. Major, you're alive. Mullinson. <laughs> I'd almost say you were glad to see me. I... Oh, I am, sir. The whole thing was a setup, Major. Can you think of a better way to judge at close hand the way you would behave under stress? You mean this whole planet was controlled? We set you down in a predetermined point with a planned course. The actual area involved was rather limited. And Sheila? Fine actress, isn't she? Actress? It wasn't real. It was real. Because you believed it to be real. But there was never any real danger. But you didn't know. That's what counts. You proved you were brave. Willing to risk your lives for each other. In every way, you showed the qualities that are required in our offices. But anybody could have... No, no. Not anybody. Less than half the class made it this year. Although we like to think that we will always be strong in any situation, we never know until we face it, even if the dangers turned out not to be real. Two young men have discovered something very real, the true value of themselves. I'll be back shortly. Two hundred or so years from now, Tyler McNeil and Franklin Mullinson will go down as heroes in space exploration. In the meantime, buildings may grow taller, planes fly faster, and hundreds of cities with brand new names may spring up in areas that now are mere points on a map. But the one thing that won't change is man's respect for wisdom, kindness, and loyalty. Precious qualities that are too rare in any age. Our cast included Russell Horton, Jack Grimes, E.V. Juster, and Robert Dryden. This is Tom Bosley inviting you to return to the General Mills Radio Adventure Theater for another exciting tale you can hear through the magic of radio. The General Mills Radio Adventure Theater is recommended by NEA, the National Education Association. We know a mover who knows about 